large city and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. The lively crowd today agrees. Those who think young say Pepsi, please. They pick the right one, the modern light one. Now it's Pepsi for those who think young. You keep in step with those who think young when you get an extra carton of Pepsi Cola. Nothing's more in tune with lively modern life than light, bracing, clean tasting Pepsi. So think young. Say Pepsi, please. <laughs> Everyone was as quiet as Sunday. Yeah, it was peaceful, all right, Kitty, but I'm not sure I like it. Why? And I'm used to Dodge teaming with ranchers, mule skinners, or trail herders. It isn't natural, this quiet. Well, even Front Street needs a rest once in a while. Yeah, well, it gets one every Sunday morning. Now, here's Del Marcos. Mm-hmm. Not a soul. No. Joe's probably out in the kitchen. Here, let's sit here. Mm-hmm. Well, you'd think somebody else would be having breakfast besides us. There's a lot of hangovers being nursed this morning, Kitty. Yeah. It's still early. Hey, Joe! Uh, you think Chester and Doc will be back tomorrow? Yeah, they should be. It's been almost a week. Why's it taking them so long? Uh, Doc was going to stay three days to be sure his patient would be all right after the operation. Oh. And it's further to Hay City in a buggy than it is on horseback. Uh. Uh, morning, Marshal. Miss Kitty. Good morning, Joe. Morning, Joe. Hey, where would it be? Had a big pot of coffee to begin with. Huh? Uh, well, I'm going to have a steak. You can put it on now if you will. You make that too, huh? Yes, sir. Hmm. Wonder what they're doing right now. Uh, Chester and Doc? Yeah. Well, if they left yesterday and spent the night on the prairie, they're probably breaking up camp and loading the buggy for the day's ride about now. And <laughs> you can bet Doc is complaining about the coffee Chester made this morning. <laughs> yeah. I just hope they remember to pick up enough food in Hayes City to last them through the trip. Hey, Doc. There's a water hole over there for them trees. Oh, they got me a full bag of water right here. Oh, my goodness. No wonder Mr. Dillon made me come along with you. You wouldn't never survive this trip alone, Miss. Water's for us, not the horses. Now, that beast of mine's too mean to deserve a drink. Mean or not, he's got to have water, Doc. And mine, too. Tied on back like he is, he's been eating dust all morning. Now, let's head for that water hole. Oh, all right. Uh, you fuss worse than an old woman, Chester. Yeah, just one more day, and we'll be back and die. And don't think I ain't looking forward to it. Doggone buggy uh-huh. teeth off a lump. What was that? A rifle shot, Doc. Somebody's out hunting, that's all. There's not a soul in sight. Well, and think, you expect him to be out running around with a flag tied on to him? Sounds like he came from those trees over there. If you're going to worry about every gunshot you hear, it's just some buffalo hunter. This water hole sure ain't much. So look, Chester, over there. there. Somebody's horse. Oh, I declare. I say it belongs to a wolfer. A what? A wolfer. He traps and poisons wolves. Oh, where is he? Oh, forevermore. Doc, I don't know. By heaven. Come on, Chester. Oh, now, what? Let's get <laughs> There's a man lying under that tree. Where? See, Chester, look down. Right over there. 
Come on. My goodness, Doc, what happened to him? Wait a minute. Here he comes. He's been shot. You out here all alone, Tom? No, I, I got partners, but they ain't here now. What happened? I dropped my rifle. It went off. It caught me. Can you do anything for him, Doc? I can try. This is a terrible place to operate, but get a fire side, Chester. I'll get my bag out of the bag. Okay. I'll get a blanket, too. Chester? What? Come here. Somebody's riding in. He's a wolfer, too. Uh, uh, hello. What's the matter with him? He had an accident, he said. I thought I heard he shot. Are you his partner? One of them. Well, he's hurt bad. But I'm a doctor, and I'll do what I can for him. I'm Jesse Turnbull. That there is Nate Gillett. I'm partners with him and his brother. His brother? Where's he at? I don't know. I'll tell you something, Doc. You better leave Nades alone. What? Leave him be, that's all. Well, now, look here. He got himself into this. Just leave him be. Well, oh, boy, they're here. Where are you going, mister? Ah, let him go, Chester. He wouldn't be of any use anyway. I sure would hate to have him for a partner. He ought to be shot. Never mind him. We've got work to do. <laughs> What you gonna do, Doc? I'm gonna get that bullet out as soon as the water's hot. Yeah. And when Chester gets back here to give me a hand. Where is he at? Well, he took the horses over to the other side of the water hole. Well, who could that be? Uh, them's my partners. That doctor fellow? That's him, Pip. Any objections? Well, Nate, I suppose you told him all about me. I ain't told him nothing. Hmm. Nate, here's my brother, Doc. I'm Pitt Gillett. Well, that's fine. Now, if you just let me get to work, maybe I can save his life. You don't need no help. Well, this man's dying. He's my brother, ain't he? He's fool enough to get himself into this. I say let him get himself out. Now, you listen to I me. I told you you'd have to kill him, Pip. I guess you're right, those gillets take care of ourselves, Doc. Now, put that knife down. Hold it right there, mister. Oh, I plumb forgot about him, Pitt. Drop that knife before I put a bullet in your belly. Drop it! You always was the biggest fool I ever seen, Jesse. Go on, get on your horses and ride out of here, both of you. Go on, get! And don't you come back here, neither. Good work, Chester. These are the ornest two animals I've ever saw. They're yeah, strange, all right. Come on, Chester. I'm going to need your help. All right, Doc. Get down, Doc! Ow! I might have known they'd try something like that. Well, looks like they're gone for now. Doc, what do you want? Doc? He hit you. Yeah. Is it bad? It's bad enough. The bullet's pressing. I'll hitch up the buggy. No, no, Chester. I couldn't sit in that buggy an hour, much less all the way to Dodge. Kill me, Sherp. But you go and bring back a wagon. No, I can't leave you here. You have to. Doc, that pit gillet, he ain't through. He'll be back here for sure. Yeah, then he'll kill you. Too. Maybe, but I ain't leaving you. Now, you just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Uh, Doc, Doc, help me. Doc, can't help you nor nobody else right now. Doc. Marriage, that fool brother of yours seen to that. I can't last forever this way. Neither can Doc. Now, Doc. you just lay back. I'll take care of you in time. Doc, Doc, I, I gotta... Uh, uh, see to him, Chester. Guess 
we can't do nothing for him now. Poor fella. Well, Doc, tell me what I'm supposed to do to get that bullet out of you. First thing, Chester, you better get some whiskey out of the buggy. You better have some, too. I think you're going to need it before you're through. No, I ain't. I'll make out, Chester. I, I want to thank you for what you're going to have to do. Now, Doc, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. <laughs> Cussed mud puddle out there, and water come up clear and fine. How you feeling, Doc? This fever is pretty high. Mm, you was kindly restless last night. Uh, I don't remember too much about that. <laughs> it's, well, this feels <laughs> like you dug that bullet out with a shovel, Chester. Well, Doc, I'm sorry, but I, I done just like you said. I know it must have hurt you something awful. You passed clean out. But you'll get your strength back now. I'll see you get back to Dodge. So I can't get my strength back without some food. Though. Well, I, I can't go hunting for no meat. Uh, ain't no telling when that pit Gillett's going to try something, him and his fat partner. But at least he can't see Nage's dead. Not from a distance, anyway. I drug him off into the brush and covered him up with rocks. Just, uh... What? I want you to get out of here. I, I may not live anyway in this... No use you sitting around waiting to get shot by those two. Understand? I understand, but you're wasting your breath. Uh, I was afraid so. Doc, I think I've seen an animal beyond them trees. I'm going over there now. I may fire a shot or two, but don't you fret none. I'll be back directly. Some good soup here for you, Doc. Soup? Best you ever ate. Well, uh, how'd you ever make soup? Well, I started out with a hunk of that old renegade steer I seen in them trees out there. I got some more of them roasting on fire, too. I just chunked a piece in this pot, boiled it up good. Then I put in some sheep sorrel and wild onions to kindly flavor it a little. <laughs> well, I'll be done. Here, now you just talk to me. Let me help you. Okay. Now, that ain't so bad, is it? That's what you've been needing. It'll give you strength. That sure is strong, Tasty. Yeah, wait a minute. What's the matter? Well, I just want to keep a good lookout, Doc. You're still worried about Pip Gillett, aren't you? Oh, no, no, not really. I ain't. I'm just being careful. Well, you know that he'll be back as well as I do. Well, don't you fret about it, Doc. He does come back. You're right snug in here with this barricade that got built up by you. Yes, I know. What about you? Well, I'll hide in the grass out there. He won't never see me. To start shooting, you won't. Yeah, but, but then I'll have the drop on him. Well, there's two of them, Chester. Well, I got more than one bullet. Well, you could ride for help. Uh, I'll be all right here. He'd kill you, sure, and I ain't leaving you, Doc. Even though it may cost you your life. Doc, my life wouldn't be worth much to me if... I was to leave. Shh. Listen, somebody's coming out. Lay low, Doc. It's that Jesse Turnbull, Doc. He's riding in with a white flag in his hand. Now, you just keep still. I'll take care of him. You not get down? What are you doing here? Pitt Gillett sent me. Where's he? Back there in camp. All right. Get down. Where's the doc? What did Gillett send you for? Oh, I see you got him over there behind them rocks. It keeps the wolves off him. And the wolfers, too. Where's Nage? 
Dick wants to know how he is. I don't even see him. He's all right. I put him out there in the brush where he can sleep good. But I don't think that's why you're here. Well, of course it is. What else should I be doing? Take that knife out of your belt and drop it on the ground. Now. I come here in peace, didn't I? Never mind that. Over there, start walking. And shut up if you don't want a bullet in you. All right, that's far enough. Now lay down. On your back. But look, do it. Chester, I... Doggone you, Jesse, you was lying. That was Pitt out there. I've a mind to kill you right no, here. No, no, he made me do it, honest. I didn't want You to. was just a decoy, huh? So he could sneak in and shoot me in the back? I wouldn't have let him. I'd have hollered or something. Sure you would. If it wasn't for Doc warning me, we'd both be dead. You're a mighty fat piece of bait, Jesse, but you smell rotten. I'm going to tie you up so you won't never get loose. Well, you can't take it out on me what Pitt Gillett might do. If he comes sneaking in here tonight, I'll blow his head off. And if you don't quit whining, I'll club yours off. <laughs> Thank you, Chester. There's a lot more, Doc. Oh, I'll have some later. You sure that isn't bear meat that you put in that soup? Oh, ain't no bears around here, Doc. Your fever's down some, ain't it? Yes, yeah, it broke last night. Yeah, Chester, you haven't had a wink of sleep for two days. Keeps me from getting fat, Doc. Yes, and it keeps me from getting killed. But this can't go on. What's the matter? Well, I don't like sitting here just waiting for that pit gillet to come busting out of the brush. It's a poor way to guard this camp. Well, how else can you do it? Well, I got to circle the grove ever so often, Doc. Out there where I can see. I'll be back directly. Well, Jesse, you ain't singing very loud this morning. I'm hungry. I gave you a piece of meat. That was more than you deserved. That was terrible meat. Where'd you get it, anyway? I wouldn't complain if I was you. It might just be the last meal you ever eat. You gonna keep me tied up like this forever? I can make you good and comfortable, Jesse. Permanent. All right. All right. Oh, oh. What is it? Shut up. You seen your partner bob his head up over that knoll yonder. Bit? Yeah. I'm gonna call over there, Jesse. And if you make one sound, I'll turn around and blow you in, too. I, w I won't do it. Just yet. remember what I said. You're covered, Gillick. Drop that rifle. Drop it now. Oh. died soon after you shot Doc. Dead? <laughs> yeah. You kill him. You kill Pitt. Here. He's dead. Oh. What you gonna do to me now? I'm gonna cut you loose. Let you move around a little. Yeah. Say, Chester, that'll be fine. But first, you're going to do some talking. I don't understand. Well, take your time, Jesse. Was it something about Nage and Pitt you want to know? Only when you're ready to tell me, Jesse. I guess it don't matter now. Nage didn't shoot herself by accident. I know that when I first rode in here. Pitt shot him. So that's it. We had an argument. Pitt told me about it later. He shot him, and then he seen you all come, and he left. He thought Nage was dead. Till you went and told him he wasn't. Yeah. Then he was afraid Nage would talk. What about you, Jesse? 
Pitt wanted me and Doc dead, too, and you was doing your best to help him. Now, why? I don't know. We was partners. Even when it come to murdering people? They was my partners, Chester. I don't know nobody else out here. That ain't the darnest fool excuse I ever heard in my whole life. I told you everything. You promised to cut me loose. All right. But just long enough for you to stretch your legs and then I'm... Well, I declare I... Why, that... What's the matter? Mr. Dillon! Mr. Dillon, over here! Mr. Dillon! Yes, sir. Oh, I sure am glad to see you. Been looking for you for two days. What happened? Well, we run into some ornery roofers and Doc got shot. What? Yes, sir, but he's doing just fine now. He, he's right over yonder. Who's that you got tied up? He's one of the wolfers. There was two more, but they're dead now. It's a long story. I'll tell you all about it later. Hey, Doc's right over there behind that barricade. I'll be darned. Hey, Doc? Hey, Doc, I got a surprise for you. Look who's here. Hey, look, Doc, he, he got worried and come looking for us. How about Doc? Well, Matt, I'm sure glad to see you. I hear you ran into a little trouble. <laughs> I guess you'd call it that. You look mighty comfortable to me. Just have been feeding you good. Yeah, uh, food. Uh, that's been the worst part of it, Matt. Just wait till you taste the meat he's been using. Huh? Well, where'd you find any meat around here, Joe? Oh, it was easy. <laughs> uh, but, Mr. Dillon, what about that wolfer? Do you think it's worth the trouble of jailing him? Uh, he's your prisoner, Chester. I'll leave that to you. Well, now there's two of us here. I, I think I'll just run him on. Good idea. Doc, how long is it going to be before we can get you into Dodge in that buggy? Oh, day or so may the matter here. If you drive real slow. And... We'll just camp here for a while. Uh, Mr. Dillon? What? Well, uh, when the time comes, I'll drive the buggy. Okay. Why not? Well, because you see, it'll be my horse who will have hitched to it. No, uh, you mean, well, what's the matter with my horse? Mean as that beast is. I not I'll tell you about your horse. We had him. Had him? Had him. Oh. Oh, so, so that was... was he. Chester, I'll never trust you. So help me not as long as, as I... As long as you what, Doc? As long as I live, Matt. Thanks to Chester. speed laws and other regulations as restrictive, unfortunately too many drivers on the road subscribe to that kind of outlook. The result is tragic. Almost 85% of all traffic accidents are caused by careless, childish driving. Our traffic laws and the people who enforce them are there to help save your life. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston and adapted for radio by Frank Paris. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Harry Bartell, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. The laughs are on Arthur Godfrey every weekday on the CBS Radio Network.